Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And hello, Michelle. So hey. Now, we are still waiting for quite a lot of people, um, and we still have one minute before we, we officially start the, the webinar here. But um, we have a packed schedule today, don't we, my friend? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, seeing what you sent me at uh, 1 a.m. this morning, uh, Indeed. <laughs> you, you, you were quite busy preparing this. That's right. That's right. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give people another minute here to join. But actually, now we are indeed 10 a.m. sharp here in Stockholm, where I'm patching in from. So um, I think um, we'll let people join as they go. But meanwhile, I'm going to jump straight into it and share my screen. Um, okay. Uh, indeed, a very good morning to everyone out there, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, very happy that we've seen such a huge, enormous interest in uh, this topic today, which makes sense given, you know, that CSDM is indeed on everybody's mind. So I'd like to officially welcome you um, to this strategic forecast and analysis about what the future of CSDM5 might hold for us. Um, now, as per usual, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction here. So for those of you who have not uh, met me before, my name is Alexander Jungström, and I am the managing director here at Einan Partners. Personally, I'm very passionate about this topic of the CSDM. Um, it's not just because I have an, a brain of an architect, let's say, um, but uh, in general, what really makes me passionate about it is how much it ties into organizational psychology, to governance, and how we make people work better together, essentially. So uh, my own background in this topic is um, it's rather long, but in the ServiceNow platform, I've been working now for over 12 years, actually. So um, time flies. Um, but uh, I'm not alone here today. Um, I have my very good dear friend, uh, Michelle, and also colleague with me. So, uh, Michelle, uh, welcome to this session. Maybe you could tell a few words about who you are. Yes. Um, well, my name is Michelle, as you know by now. I'm, uh, yeah, the partner uh, in Luxembourg, in Einan Partners Luxembourg. And I do also still work a lot uh, with customers as lead strategic advisor. Um, and in, in that role, actually, CSDM, um, I know personally, I'm also on the platform since 2012, and I've done uh, ITSM, item, a lot of solutions. And, you you know, I, I love to build stuff on that on that platform. So I have that really technical background on the platform, but grew then really also into, you know, advising uh, companies. And when CSDM3 already came along, Back then, for for that company I was working, they were already looking at standardizing their CMDB, and it gave a really good start. So um, I'm quite excited for today because CSDM5 is quite a development since then. So yeah, yeah so that is a bit my role, and you can see I'm also quite excited about uh, talking about it today. Right? Totally, totally. Um, so let's have some fun here today. Um, now, what people will learn um, is, uh, first of all, what CSDM 5.0 hopefully will bring. So some key differences, um, key concepts, and important aspects. You, Michelle, will also touch up on a little bit the consumer versus provider perspective and how that ties into this um, update of the CSDM model. But then, of course, a topic which is probably on everybody's mind today is how do we actually plan for the future here? And then finally, we will have a number of questions, analysis, and insights as well. Um, so indeed, we do have a packed schedule. Um, but to set some expectations, then um, with CSDM5, as we know, first of all, it's this today is a forecast. And CSDM5 is still in a draft state. Um, so everything that we're speaking about today is built on current and known information. But it should be worth mentioning the official release is not out yet. Um, because CSDM is a very large model, we will touch mostly upon the, let's say, <clears throat> more broader implications, and we won't go down into the nitty gritty. And the scope of today, we will be focusing on the main domains of CSDM5. We do make some assumptions, which is that the people joining the call today already are up to speed a little bit about the fundamental, fundamental concepts of CSDM. So we will not explain everything in, in the most basic sense. Um, for those of you who are not up to speed, 
We at Inland Partners have a great YouTube video where we explain CSDM in 10 minutes. Um, and speaking of Inland Partners, um, who are we? Very brief touch point. Um, our sales pitch is easy. <laughs> we are a boutique partner um, in IT operations and AI ops strategy, where very much CSDM falls under. Um, ServiceNow is our primary platform, and uh, I like that we, you know, really consider ourselves sort of um, experts these days in data models, service operations, and CMDB. And often what I think we do quite well is that we focus not just on the technical parts, but really on the governance, execution, and simplifying the complexities. Um, and actually we've led now some of the biggest CMDB and CSDM transformations globally. And in matter of fact, I'm proud to say that we have over 100 transformations completed by this day. So um, as you might know, for those of you who are following us a lot, we've also done a number of other previous content when it comes to CSDM, anything from research and benchmarks to master classes to how to build business case, etc. So I'm very excited about being able to unpack the CSDM5 model today together with all of you here. Um, some other housekeeping before we get started. There is a Q&A um, feature, so uh, you can actually ask us questions. This session is also being recorded, so it will be published on YouTube. And if you have any questions, type in the Q&A box and we will do our best to answer it on the fly. If we don't have time and it's a really interesting question, we might get back to you personally. But uh, to box this in a little bit, why are we even doing this session today? Well, first of all, um, to set the scene, CSDM is quite complex, but at the same time, it's on everybody's roadmap in mind. And my personal opinion is that it's really in, in need of some simplification and a broader industry consensus of like, how do we do things properly? And previously in CSDM, Although, you know, it's getting better and better, it also leaves definitions and best practices a little bit ambiguous. Um, and it, I mean, both you and me, Michelle, know that it creates a lot of interpretation and things like governance, so personas, ownerships, architectures, etc. And especially because the platform so much depends on CSDM, like other modules like GRC, ITSM, service portfolio, etc. Obviously, it's quite relevant to, to prepare for CSDM5. And I'm sure you agree upon these points as well, Michel, and probably more yeah. thereof, right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, 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 again, could go into details there, but um, yeah. all of this resonates strongly with me. Yeah. Um, I want to make it clear already now at the get-go that uh, will CSDM5 make everything perfect and will it be a silver bullet that makes everything super simple and, you know, a great world? No, it won't. Um, but it will likely improve our world significantly. And that's what we're going to speak about today. Yep. So with that being said, I think uh, let's uh, dive into it. So um, we're going to start off actually by breaking down the, the core concept um, of CSDM5 in these domains. Um, and this here in front of you, this is the latest public draft of the CSDM5. Um, this can be found on LinkedIn, it, can, it, it was shown on Knowledge and a lot of other places. Um, and this is essentially what we're going to speak a little bit more around today. Um, but to make it a little bit more digestible, we're going to break down each of these areas of model and speak a little bit around the main differences and updates that we suspect are strongly likely to happen. Um, and I'd like to start off here in order for, for the rest of this session uh, to make sense, then we do need to establish a definition um, because this definition will become a central core piece of uh, CSDM5 and that is digital product. So you will hear a lot about digital products moving forward. And this is actually inspired um, on architecture best practices from the open group, which is the guys who, who created IT for IT. And they really formalized a lot around the concept of digital products. Um, now, let's start here with the definitions because probably not all of you maybe have heard about a digital product before, or maybe you have, but you don't really know how it should be defined. So. What is a digital product then? Well, a digital product is actually a service, physical item or digital item that provides an agreed and specific outcome for a consumer. 
and that incorporates and requires software to realize an outcome. So that's a quite long definition. So if we, you know, can you be less abstract? What does it mean? In a nutshell, digital products, they refer to any software application or technology-based solution that delivers value to customers or users. And if we translate this to ServiceNow, then it essentially translates to behind a digital product, it can be a service, it can be hardware or goods, or it can be our dear friend, business applications, as long as it is digital and requires software to realize an outcome. Um, so why digital products then? Well, actually, so I, we could obviously have a separate, you know, webinar only about this, but why digital products? Well, merging multiple disciplines is the first part. So actually the management of services and technology it falls and merges a little bit under the umbrella of digital product management. And actually it shifts the focus more on like developing products rather than just working on projects. And the entire idea is that behind a digital product, you should be able to support a wider spectrum of services, hardware and applications under one umbrella term, as long as they require software basically. And it also touches actually upon end-to-end -end management that in a digital product life cycle, you go all the way from ideation of a product all the way to retirement. And through this life cycle, there's a continuous stream of updates and enhancements. And it really emphasizes a lot around service delivery, user experience, and how we integrate to other IT services to support a business outcome. I'd like to mention here that digital products is not something new with CSDM5 or even by, by this open group, but digital products as a concept have existed essentially since software apps and online services were first created and sold to deliver value. So this definition is something you and me, Michelle, discussed a lot around and especially around the hardware and goods yeah. that, that can actually be something behind the digital product, which for me is like one of these a little bit new concepts to to incorporate. Yeah, in in indeed, um, and I I think this this slide as uh, a slide summarizes it great. I mean, we 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 uh, we discussed a lot about our opinions. So the only thing I would like then to add here is a bit of a a, a more tangible context as well, at least how I experience things. And uh, I wrote down actually uh, the definition that you have here on the left, which is the official definition that was also mm -hmm. given by Mark Boatman. Mm -hmm. um, but what I understood also after reading up is that a digital product is now anything digitally enabled that the business requires to keep track of while operating. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is, I think, beautiful because now we have uh, what does CSDM5 provides us now? It's it's an entry point uh, to streamline our governance and everything around. Yeah. Because if we look at CSDM4, it was very, uh, how Boatman put it, project-centric. I also found IT-centric because we always tried to, to, to model that IT service chain. It was, you know, mm. always uh, uh, about that, at least from how I perceived it. Uh, there were, of course, also initiatives uh, to to incorporate the wider spectrum. I mean, often we, we talked about IoT and and uh, which we sure. find find a lot in manufacturing, for example. And that is what this ex exactly does to the, this definition. It now um, incorporates all the people in the organization that have to deal with technology, even if they sit outside of IT. And this can be customers using cloud services. I mean, we use Azure, AWS. Mm -hmm. It's strongly used by us as a customer, but also strongly supported uh, by, by the vendor. And they need a strong um, uh, governance when following this digital product and the releases and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can also be, you know, operational teams that use modern to, uh, technology, uh, production devices in manufacturing, they are all interconnected. It's mm -hmm. it's technology, you know. Uh, it can also be, I've seen regional IT teams, you know, uh, companies acquire other companies, but the regional teams, they remain. They just have to, uh, to adapt uh, to corporate standards then. And that is where also then corporate IT comes in, because corporate IT 
in ServiceNow owns typically the ServiceNow platform and standardizes these processes across the organization. And mm. the digital product now provides really that entry point to think about governance and how to build this. Love that you used the word entry point because that's exactly what we, we're going to touch upon here next a little bit. So. Uh, thanks for those reflections and we wanted to and you know obviously this definition can be debated and, and so forth and so on but we wanted to establish this a little bit because throughout the rest of, of today's session it's going to be highly relevant so let's dive in to the uh, different areas of CSDM then the different domains and you will see us having color coded here in the in the left bottom um, which domain we're actually speaking about so the first one is our dear friend in the design domain and the name there will likely change to design and planning. That's first of all. Now, historically, and I'm sure that a lot of people recognize this who have worked with CSDM on the call, is that business applications, the concept of it, were often misinterpreted. Like I've been sitting in so many different discussions of what is a business application? Is it, you know, is it a plugin on the computer? Is it a big enterprise system we buy in? Is it is it a SaaS service, you know? So and also creates like a lot of edge cases of, as I said, what is really a business application. And typically the personas were very like focused on enterprise architects and application owners. And behind business applications, if, if you use, for example, APM um, or application portfolio management, then, you know, the business applications would be rolled up to an application portfolio. Um, and often the first step on the CSDM journey uh, it is to to start with these business applications then. Um, now, in CSDM5 then, what are the main likely differences? So this is where digital products come in as a concept. So digital products are hereby being introduced as a less limiting concept. Um, because actually, when we look at digital products, they may represent a business application still, but sometimes you might have a case where, oh, let's say you're a bank and you provide a web portal, which actually is a service, and that requires a lot of different technology stacks, but you still want to consider it a business application. And sometimes you might have even goods or hardware that you deliver, but they are highly, highly uh, digitalized and contains a lot of software. So the digital products actually represent here now three things. The business applications like we're used to, but behind it, we can also now introduce services or even hardware. And the philosophy around it all is that these three things can be treated the same when we speak about governance, when we speak about planning, ideation, etc., etc. Um, and finally, the personas here before, um, you know, application owner, it was very centric on, on application owners, but now digital product managers are here also introduced as sort of an updated persona a little bit. The enterprise architects very much still remain, obviously. Um, so APM or the application portfolio might still very much be relevant. That's still going to be a thing. But now with this uh, new release, it's very likely that we will be able to introduce a digital product portfolio as well. So, Michelle, what do you feel about this? Some some um, reflections from your side, if you have something to add. Yeah, uh, I I love that we are now really defining the role of digital product managers. Um, mm. I've seen often uh, either very a lot of discussions about what products even are and who is supposed to manage them and where are we supposed to manage them. Um, there are a few good approaches and uh, I've seen also, you know, some customer do this, some customer do that. Um, and, and that's in general what we see now. We have, as, as we said, we have now this entry point. We can now place ownership with uh, products through this digital product manager. And we can thus uh, streamline uh, the governance throughout the entire CSDM5 model. And you will touch upon that later. So I, I won't spoil the fun there. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, I agree with you. Um, I think uh, this bridges, you know, that gap on, on product management quite well. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, you know, a less limiting concept indeed. Um, and we're going to touch up on later how this impacts you. Do you now need to change everything, etc.? So don't worry. Um, now, then we have, and this is you know, my, my, one of my favorite parts. It's the orange part of CSDM, where we typically are managed technology. Um, 
and this I feel is you know quite a often misunderstood little little child of CSDN. And the key update here is that it's likely to change name to service delivery, and we'll explain soon why. Um, and also there, I mean, you know, we work a lot with service mapping with ITOM, and if you look at something like application services, very deeply misunderstood. Um, because it makes sense if you speak to an application team who are deploying, you know, a, an application stack, but as soon as you approach the network team or connectivity team or something like that, then it's, you know, then application services makes less sense actually. Or if you have something like, oh, I don't know, a SaaS application and you don't have access to the infrastructure, but you still want to have the application service there, what does that then, you know, do? Um, so historically, in this domain of managed technology, it's been quite difficult to separate things like infrastructure services, platform services, uh, teams providing bare bone hardware, if you have outsourcing providers, etc. And this very much relates to this concept of like technical services, which again has been very ambiguous and open for a lot of interpretation. And this is where I'm quite excited about CSDM5. Um, because application services will likely now be called service instance instead. Um, so we've heard like CSDM5, it, it used to be maybe system and now it is service instance, but service instance appears to be the name that is likely to stick. And the reason I like it is because now we can actually have different flavors or derivatives of service instance. So it retains the, the function of an application service, but it's basically expanded. So you can now have service instances where you only deal with data or applications, so the traditional application stack or network, for example, or connection and operational. And all of these are added as extended tables to service instance, which is quite nice. And actually also when we look here, and we're gonna explain this in the next slide, um, it's more clear personas and how the different services, uh, service instances can be used. So. Finally, the word for technical services um, will now likely be called technology management services, and it's going to be very centric around that. So on the next slide, we're going to have an example of this, but a quick touch point here with you, Michelle, and reflections. Yeah, um, uh, yeah as, as, as you mentioned, a lot of things, examples such as technical versus business service, that discussion always comes up, and then oh, we turn to our dear friend Archimate for a solution. Um, and then, uh, I mean, I love that we are now clearly uh, saying uh, technology management service. Uh, mm -hmm. It is understood on our end, but it was difficult to explain that in, in clear terms. Uh, and I think that happens now simply because what we're seeing is the technical product is now actually linked to our service instance. So to say uh, yeah. the digital product is the, the is becoming the service instance um as well we will see more in detail later how that works yeah. um but because that happens um we are basically now uh connecting uh the technology uh, uh effectively to our service chain that we have and that That's service chain uh we are operating it on a on a daily basis so it's less project oriented where we fix and do everything and and implement with processes it will be much closer uh to yeah how we operate our services um, and uh, in, in, in that context provides us then again with much clearer definition. So yeah, yeah absolutely but... love what they've done to the now uh, managed technology while well, service delivery domain. Yeah, naming is important. So let's have a look at it and visualize this a little bit. First of all, here we see two personas. One is a service instance owner that used to be like an application service owner. And then now we actually have service delivery owner as well. And we have here a separation, application and platform and infrastructure service. And we're gonna explain how, how this might um, play out. So if we look here now, a service instance owner, they might have a technology management service with very much still an offering. And here there is a service instance. Again, you can have different types of service instances. And behind that is infrastructure. Um, so here, infrastructure service, similar concept there that we have a technology management service with an offering 
then maybe here a dynamic CI group instead. So let's look at how this could look in a practical example. Let's imagine that you have an integration platform that is your technology management service. And one of your offerings is an API gateway. And then you actually here have an API um, broker production environment where you have a number of, of servers, databases, and so forth to facilitate that API gateway. On the other hand, you have the infrastructure providers. So here the infrastructure service could be, depending on the company, for example, network services. And they provide load balancers of F5. And within there, you see Engine, Nginx load balancers for EU, for example. Because the guys over here at infrastructure services, they just give you the load balancer. They don't care how you use it, in which application you use it. They just say, here's your load balancer. We'll make sure to you know, patch it, configure it, or whatever it might be, but we will keep the lights on. But the guys up here, they actually care way more about how this is actually configured and the gritty things where the traffic is sent, etc. So this is what I think is really nice, that this is now clearly being more distinguished of like who provides infrastructure services, for example. And it could also be third party uh, providers, outsourcing providers, etc. And, you know, again, the service delivery domain will support this in a more clear manner, actually. It could also be the, the network team. I, I, when I yeah. see this, what I envisage, well, the network team also provides Wi-Fi services, for example. Exactly. exactly. Where you have a network portal and so on. So that would be the service, in, a service instance that we then connect to underlying technology. We could have dynamic CI groups, all the, the Wi-Fi access points in that location. And we right. now can connect that service instance the, the Wi-Fi that we're providing with these access points that we need to yes. manage. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think this is going to be way more clear for people, especially like IT technical teams and so forth, um, of what goes where. Um, so that's really nice. Um, see, we're getting a lot of questions, by the way, so uh, we're going to get to those in a bit. Um, yeah, let me check that while you are continuing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, everyone. So. Um, the main updates then to the sell and consume domain. And here again, we're likely to see a name change. So service consumption. So we have service delivery and we have service consumption. Michelle will speak more about that later. Um, historically in CSDM4, it hasn't always been super clear the connection between like how we sell and consume business services towards things like CSM, for example, or customer service management. And often it has actually been difficult to answer the basic question of who should consume a business service. Is it our clients? Is it our internal employees? Um, who is the ultimate consumer of that business service? And it's also been a little bit unclear what foundation data is actually linked to these different business services and offerings and so forth. Um, in CSDM5, we will see some updates here. So first of all, we will introduce sold products and installed base. Um, for those of you who have worked in customer service management for before, you might recognize this. Um, so actually, this will now be included in CSDM5 at most likely installed base, sold products, you may still require CSM to, to utilize. Um, but what I think is very interesting in this domain is that we now start distinguishing um, of you know service consumption here what is an internal consumer, so used by employees, versus what are things used by clients, so business to business or, or business to consumer. So that actually links also to the foundation data, that if you have a business service offerings, which is linked to some groups, teams, or users, that's most likely employees. But if you have an offering which is you know, linked to accounts, if you're using CSM, for example, um, should say CSM there, then um, yeah, uh, you you again are distinguishing who uses what. So actually it looks something like this down there. Um, we see here now we still have a business service offerings, but then related to the catalogs is actually what products are we selling um, and then the install base items of those. Um, so actually not huge updates to this part of the model, but welcome nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I really love now how we do that that link to CSM and ITSM. Uh, yeah. uh, you, we can really see how now the CSDM five supports also connecting processes much better. 
Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, good. Then um, some main updates here. Um, um, Bill, sorry to to interrupt you. Um, should we after we finish this because we have a great set of questions that relates mm -hmm. back to previous discussions. Um, we can also continue and finish uh, this first. So uh, if you have questions, submit them now, please. Uh, and then we will do a quick summary of everything that we've seen. Yes, I guess. I, I think that's we'll we'll save uh, ten five ten minutes in the end here, unless there's some very quick question we can answer. Um, yeah. No, they are all a bit more in depth. So that's all right. Let's continue. All right. Yes. Um, so yeah, the build domain then. Um, now this this appears to still be a little bit you know um, in in draft stage, let's say. Um, but there are some things we can deduct already, uh, which is likely to happen. Uh, the build domain hasn't been that heavily used in CSDM4. It has existed there, but it's pretty much only had the SDLC component. And you know that thing hasn't always been like super properly explained. So it's been a very niche part of, of CSDM. Um, and it's actually difficult to understand for, for a lot of people how this build domain ties into the wider sort of product and service life cycle. Um, historically as well, if we speak about the governance, a lot of the governance has actually been applied like on operational CIs and objects in other parts of CSDM. Um, so you might measure data quality on services, offerings, application services, etc. And often, you know, this, this one has, this is a personal opinion actually, it has felt a little bit maybe like a misfit where we haven't really seen the same level of like catalogs or who should consume this domain and so forth. Um, now, in CSDM5 then, what are we seeing there? Um, so first of all, SDLC here, um, we won't only have that, but we will probably gain a number of new objects. Um, one of them, which is quite certain, is something called work item, um, but it appears as well that it will be more integration focused. So things like DevOps integration objects are also likely to be added. Um, and actually this build domain is quite a central core piece of digital products lifecycle, especially if you develop things with DevOps and, and software components and so forth. Um, what I think is interesting as well is that there's always this gap between what developers develop and how we deploy it. And now we can likely be able to shift governance more to pre-deployment. So we will actually understand if like, the deployed configuration of something deviates from the intended build design. And that's a very nice feature. Um, and in general, there will be a stronger link between who is requesting like technology management services. Um, so that would be people in the build domain. And then, you know, what's the link here between service delivery and the build domain? So it feels a bit more integrated um, in my viewpoint at least. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely. I I really like it uh, because again we have we have a customer that that uh, has uh, some challenges uh, related to this. Actually, they have a development team and they also now uh, need to use the the CMDB or yeah. uh, because of regulatory reasons, um, and. That build team is primarily interested in the business applications that they they provide. It's their digital products, uh, mm -hmm. so that we have pretty well defined. But they also have, um, you know, co components uh, that they uh, want to document during development, which are, are tightly linked to 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 the digital products. You know, okay. um, so it's it's things such as configuration files, versioning of those configuration files, and. Yeah. Uh, we were not sure if we should use SDLC component or not, but now with CSDM5, this gives us a much clearer picture, especially I think one of the, the diagrams that was that was, is floating around the internet showed a connection to BOM, so, uh, which is in the interest of this customer. Um, um, actually, this, this relates now. We're getting two quick questions that I can answer. Um, yeah, one yeah. is, uh, would, would infrastructure as code also be in the build domain? Absolutely, there would be a type of artifact in the build domain, so infrastructure as code. And then there is another question, um, which we haven't spoken a lot about today, which is, what do you think about the business process is not part of the CSDM? 
it, it's it, it is it's just it is. a foundational layer so uh, ba basically when when uh, we say we're talking we are connecting uh, now the digital product to the service chain while the service chain is governed with business processes yeah that is will, the link we will show this later yeah. so um good then uh, we have a we have still a lot of stuff to to cover here and with only 25 minutes left and we're gonna leave some some time for questions then i want to be conscious so the new domain here is ideation um and again this is now a little bit of, of speculative areas um but it will probably be something in in the terms of this so first of all what is this new domain well we're actually incorporating product ideas and work items as a stronger part of the life cycle of digital products because let's think of it a little bit um the entire concept is that we want to have a bridge between the business or the consumers basically and people who do design and planning so architects and product owners because people who are working with the business services who are working with customers with the consumers they often get product ideas based on feedback for example and that's obviously where, where this ideation domain comes into the picture, that it gives a more structured way to incorporate in these product ideas. Um, some of you might already recognize this because it exists in, in SPM or service portfolio management. But this is what likely now will be replicated over to CSDM5 as part of the core platform. So not a huge amount of information is out there yet about this particular domain. Um, but for those who have that very like centric um, you know, um, product centric mindset with ideas, ideation, working with backlog items, epics, um, those sort of things. This can definitely be an interesting new part of the model. Yeah, I've uh, seen, seen customers work with idea and demand management right. um, and, and now incorporating that as well. Um, exactly. Like it. That's it. Good. Um, now, one of the things here when we spoke about business processes before a little bit are value streams and CSDM. So I'm just going to show one slide here, but this is going to be interesting, I think. So actually, I'm working with a lot of clients in, in finance, in public sector, etc., where, yes, we speak about services. Yes, we speak about products we deliver. But ultimately, what is on top of a lot of people's minds these days is like, what is the actual value stream? That, that we deliver basically. So what is a value stream then? Well, it's a series of steps that an organization takes to create and deliver a product or service to customers. And it really goes from start to finish and it focuses on maximizing value and minimizing inefficiency throughout this process. And this often relates to customer journeys. And it appears like value streams will now be added um, as part of the foundation um, in CSDM. So we have a value stream on top here, and then we have stages in that value stream. Um, this is not related to life cycle stages of, of things like that, but this is now a new thing, um, value stream stage. But each stage here might actually rely on different digital products, business services, or processes or capabilities actually and if we break those then if we break this down in an example let's say i want to pay my taxes right so if we break this down the different stages here is that i might have a need so i receive a letter that is time to pay my taxes and there is the planning stage i gather my documentation etc i do some preparation um, in the tax software i input some data i submit it i buy electronically then there it's reviewed by the tax authorities and hopefully if I, if I haven't been a naughty boy then you know it will be paid out some sort of um, money back to me hopefully um, but this is just a conceptualization of a value stream where in each of these value stream states you might obviously rely on different digital products different capabilities business services etc and here there will be tighter integration with csdm5 basically this for me is exciting actually it's 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 very interesting so you you've been uh you've looked into this uh topic more uh, than i did the value streams but i yeah. as i understand it they do two things um first of all um they help us plan uh and uh, our our business process right uh define the steps be very governed about it uh and then on the other end they ha help us define our 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 service because in the end we, service uh by definition we deliver value 
Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what we're doing with this is really providing kind of that entry point uh, for people that have to design services, that have to design the processes around it, and that need to 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 have the knowledge about the digital products the company has, the business services, and the capabilities it has already in place to to realize these value streams and stages. That is okay. how I understand this. Yeah, no, it's it's a good interpretation of it. And I'm getting a very brief interesting question here. Is there an overlap between process and value stream definition? Um, looks exactly like the same thing, but it just focuses on, you know, steps and inputs and outputs. Yes, the concept, the, the core concept is uh, quite similar, uh, but it should be noted that within each stage of the value stream, you might have multiple processes that needs to, to operate together. Um, so uh, although they look similar, <laughs> A process also has stages, you have inputs and outputs. Um, value stream is a bit more broader concept, actually. Mm. Um, so, um, good. Um, Michelle, I think then it's actually your part here of getting a bit practical um, yeah. when it's coming to building the, the best CMDB. So, what do you take here, uh, you know, five, ten minutes around this topic? Uh, yeah. Why don't you take um... it away? Yeah, so I have uh, prepared a few thoughts also here, but um, first and foremost, I also want to, to uh, make a little um, uh, note here that we also will have a new CSTM video soon uh, that will uh, actually talk a bit about this and also introduce uh, a, a concept that we, we are using internally. We call it CSTM layers. Um, it will be important for the next slide. Um, but basically, when we go uh, to customers and we talk about CSDM, um, we kind of need an, also an entry point uh, uh, to start a discussion. And I always like to to approach it in a way that I'm 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 breaking it up into into um, into various parts. And the first thing I'm always saying is. When we built the CMDB, especially because we are IT and, and, and we, we love technology, we, we are very solution focused. Uh, that is what I see a lot. So we think a lot about the CMDB data that we have to put in and to manage. Um, but the best CMDB also incorporates the organizational data. And totally. you, you really, you know, think about the organization. As you can see, we, we make a lot of efforts uh, now, especially with the digital product, it's way more business focused, you know, way more mm -hmm. focused on the how the organization works, how the organization creates its services and provides its services. Mm -hmm. We now need to, to really think about that uh, organizational aspect of the data as well. And I mm -hmm. typically like to split it up between business stakeholders and IT stakeholders under CSDM4. I would say under CSDM5, it is IT and operational stakeholders. Um, mm. But then on, when I look at the CMDB data, how I typically like to break that up is into uh, enterprise architecture or the business layer, uh, service management, uh, mm. and the operations management. Um, yeah. And we really bring try to bring this together. So now may, let's look. I think that's the next slide that's yeah, up yeah. is then how this looks like in CSDM4, just to, to have a little comparison of, of what comes and what changes. So um, as, I, as you can see, we have the uh, typical uh, CSDM domains, the mm -hmm. design, manage, technical, cell, consume, and foundation. Yeah. Um, and to the left, you can see then our layers. You have the business layer, the service layer, and the operations layer. Mm -hmm. um, and to the right, you can then also see on a very high level how the stakeholders relate to these layers. Mm -hmm. um, and and you can now see how these layers brings that that organizational data that approach uh, into the CSDM modeling because now we can really break up the ownership uh, and especially using the 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 standard roles that ServiceNow provides already with the CSDM we can now categorize where they are within this 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 matrix and also what uh, are they actually supposed to do with the CSDM? Because each role, each area, business has other interests than, than operations. And, uh, you know, we see a lot when we talk uh, about CSDM, we always bring up the broader terms, but then we, when we talk to, to, to the more business-minded people, uh, they are like, uh, we don't care so much for operations, tell us just about business and operations, tell us more about operations. So so you can see how this... this um, helps us break it up. And 
Maybe let's have a look then at the, the how the difference is in the DeFi version, shall we? Um, because uh, exactly. I think you add them there. So. so what we can see now is that the business application changes to the digital product, all right? Um, that means uh, here we have now this digital product owner, well-defined, who can work together with the necessary business stakeholders to really define the business. You know, we have we have now insights really from top down into that digital product, which business processes, which you can see to the left, business processes is part of foundation because that is its own solution set. But I consider it uh, also to be part of the business layer because it mm -hmm. connects to that digital product. Uh -huh. Yeah. And this allows us to build then out our uh, capabilities and thus business services, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to the to the right, it really focuses on what uh, what the business provides, and that is valuable business services enabled by digital products to consumers. As easy Love as it. that. All right. Yeah. But then we need the, the 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 engine. We need the entire logistics behind this. You know, uh, it's uh, these business services don't provide themselves. So we have these <laughs> entire uh, service chains, value chains uh, behind the business service, uh, which is the uh, managed by the operational stakeholders. Um, this was in CSDM4 very IT focused, uh, and I love that they broaden the IT focus now to to as I said. Consume, uh, to 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 people to operational stakeholders that have to deal with technology that are tightly linked to IT. And you're right? speaking of this part here, right? Correct. Yes, ex exactly. Um, so basically, uh, as you can see now in operations, we can define service instances, right? Yeah. Uh, that means that is basically our instance of the digital product. Yeah. Uh, it can basically be any service instance, any chain that that you put in place that provides value can be represented as service instance now with the new definitions uh the sky is the limit right yeah, yeah. um and this relates actually also to a question uh that we got um yeah. in the picture of cfdm5 the question was about business application will replace digital product as you described digital product it seems like a digital product could be represented by any type of service hardware software or business application is it replaced or is that just a new box to put these different concepts in i no i i can only the answer is not a new box but what determines that like what is behind here is it a business application is it a service etc what actually distinguish that is the types of service instances which is underlying it basically that's um, my primary understanding so it will not be like a classification here is it a business app is it you know a, a service etc I would actually be driven from like what's the underlying service instances and that will pretty much determine like is it an instance of an enterprise application we bought is it an instance of potentially like a bigger service we created or is it an instance of like a physical but very digital product that we're manufacturing for example um all right we we get a lot of questions so we will reply yeah, them probably later as well but what i was getting to is also um how the the service instance there was a question about how how it it manifests also towards the customer um and the service instance my my reply here is as as, as uh, it it is as long as you need it to be and i gave yesterday the 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 very simplified example if you have a vacuum cleaner that you buy from a company uh, okay it's electric uh, it may have a display but uh, the company does not feel the need to track it it's not in their operational interest anymore but would it now be cloud connected and maybe the vacuum cleaner here is a ridiculous example but i could say okay. your tes if you have a tesla car the yeah, entire yeah. ecosystem that's a that's that's a service chain that reaches into a, a, even even far beyond the point of sale even when the customer is using it so that is really what the service instance describes and your digital product yeah. um so the digital product linked to the entire process and business the governance while the service instance is then really how you deploy and operate it and you Love need it. to keep track of it yeah um so a lot can be said here um and um with only 10 minutes left, then let's have a look a little bit around the future, very briefly then. So how can how can people prepare? Um, first of all, what will be the actual impact then of governance and service ownerships? We hear now like, oh, things will change, um, you know, new things get added, etc. Maybe you spent a lot of time um, educating people in certain concepts and do we now need to start from scratch? No. Unless you really don't want to, then not much is actually changing. So. 
you know, from a governance and service ownerships, etc., you can retain what you have. It's, you know, obviously going to be back, you know, backported. So that's one thing. Yes, there might be a few labels with changes. If it's really a problem, you can change them back or you can update your documentation and do an educational effort. But this is a choice. Um, nothing is enforced here. Um, but I do think for the people who, who adapt this mindset a little bit more, then it will actually simplify and clarify things um, much, much better for people. Um, so now, what do we know so far then about CSDM5? Um, well, this is just to, to recap and, and summarize a little bit. So it will introduce new aspects, but it will clarify things like the personas and definitions and so forth. Um, it will have more distinguished concepts between service providers, consumers and planning aspects, which I really like. Um, now, the service provider domain, so that's used to be the managed technology basically, it will have more in-depth granularity there to distinguish different types of service instances that the different technology teams are, are providing. Um, and I want to be clear that all the digital products are introduced. Um, services is still very much like a central core piece of it. It's just a digital product. Again, it doesn't replace services. We're still going to use business services and, and you know, technology management services and so forth. Um, CSDM5, um, will also likely introduce the possibility to create these digital product portfolios alongside with potential application portfolios and so forth. Um, and we definitely will see more development in the build domain, it seems, to really enable that entire chain from ideation and then art creating artifacts all the way to deployment and so forth. And it appears also that CSDM5 will, will come with a number of industry-specific examples workflows and, and reference architectures, which I think is really nice, actually. And according to the latest information, then CSDM5 will likely be properly introduced in the Yokohama release. Um, before this webinar, and then I think we can spend here maybe maybe five um, minutes on, on people's questions, which they've submitted. Yeah, um, I, I think we have to reply to a lot of questions, though, <laughs> afterwards. So yeah, you, will, yeah, yeah. You, will, you will anyway get a follow up. Totally, totally. Yeah. Uh, but we, we did ask people to pre-submit questions. So here are some common questions, which I think is, is relevant for everyone. Can we still have our business applications? Yes, I hope it's clear now. They they belong to the digital products. They will not be ripped out. Um, so um, you can very much that, have your business application. That said, to reply also to the question, uh, waiting for CSTM4, or should we start we, with uh, CSTM5? I see, mm -hmm. should I wait for CSTM5? Um, you can already get started. I say it's re five is retro uh, is compatible with four. Uh, so if you have your definitions of business applications already today, don't worry. You can expand it if need be into five, but you can stick with what you have right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so what about application services then? As we mentioned, they will be renamed to service instances most likely. Um, how will this um, you know, interplay with things like service mapping? Um, most likely those will be connected to things like the new service instance tables. Um, will the tables stay the same? Yes, um, unless we're you know, the ones that are being introduced, but otherwise, like you said, Michelle, for backwards compatibility. Yeah, there is um, also a question here. Uh, how? What will be the impact on all the already extended tables? You know, for service auto discovered, calculated. We can't really know what happens to those. Uh, yeah, but it appears like at least the table names will will. I mean, know. they will not. They will not uh, put their service mapping uh, tool, one of their most successful tool, at risk just just to accommodate yeah. CSDM five. It will be the other way around. That's my take on it. Yeah, probably. Um, and then we did get, get some questions around, should we wait for CSDM5? Like you said, Michelle, no, get started already. Um, it's because in the end of the day, um, if you're always going to wait for the next release, the next definitions, etc., then you're never going to get started on this cultural journey. So the sooner, the better, I would say. And yeah, and, and there is also a reason that ServiceNow now publishes already so many teasers and has Mark Boatman speak in, in, in public uh, webinars about it. Get yeah, started. Yeah. Totally. Um, and then do we then need to change all the documentation? Let's say you've written definitions, you have governance documents, etc. I mean, it depends. Like, again, 
things stay largely the same. So if you don't want to change things, you don't need to. The absolute worst case is maybe that you need to switch back some labels. Um, but again, that one is, you know, I'm, yeah, that one can be debated maybe. Um, so how can we best prepare? I like my personal take on it, depending on like how, how in depth you are is really digital products is, is a thing to read up on uh, because I do like the philosophy and the more I get into it, um, the more it resonates with me. Um, and then often, you know, we're not going to lie here, CSDM, because it's a cultural journey, it's about making people agreeing, understanding the psychology behind service delivery and who consumes things. It obviously tends to take a little bit of time to teach people to implement it, to roll it out. Will this still be true? Yes, um, but CSDM should be taken bit by bit and seen also as a cultural transformation. And we do have a YouTube video speaking about specifically how you can do the organizational transformation part of CSDM. Um, so, whoa, I think we actually managed. That is insane. Um, now, there's been a <laughs> lot of information here today. Um, and, you know, if 50% if of it sticks, um, I'm happy. Um, but let's have a uh, look through the questions um, and see here if there are some interesting ones. Um, it should be mentioned maybe as well that um, please do follow Ainan and Partners on LinkedIn, uh, follow us on YouTube. We post a lot of content about these things. Um, so, um, you know, if you want to stay on top of things and the latest, um, you know, the latest assessments, then do follow us. Um, so we're getting some questions here. Um, here is, uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, do you find an interesting? Oh, yeah. Well, there I are a lot of here. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here is one. Um, will the information object entity play a key role in the DORA and NIS2 legislation? Um, what is your thoughts? So, for those of you who are maybe not in EU right now and, and you know, don't care much about DORA, it's a regulation. We have actually an upcoming uh, masterclass about it. But yes, information object will very much be, be uh, a key part of NIS2 and DORA regulations. Um, uh, we have another question. What about where an application is not a digital product? For example, an internal application that has been developed in-house. It's not sold or brought. It's just an application that's used internally. That's fine. I think uh, there is a, a misapprehension here around that you need to sell digital products. That's not necessarily the case. It's just a matter of, in this case, someone internally is consuming it, most likely. If it's done a technology service or a business service, that may differ. Um, but yeah. to be clear, yeah, a digital, you know, if an application is not a digital product, an application would likely it, always be a digital product. <laughs> it, it relates to that, uh, uh, who, is, who is the consumer, you know? Yeah. Uh, is it an internal or an external consumer? External is customer, internal is your employees, your, you know, you build your, your, your service uh, chains and the digital products enable them. So in, in this case, this, is, this internal business application is also a digital product because it enables a business process and service. Yeah. Um, okay, very cool. Um, oh, QR code is not working. Sorry for that. Um, well, um, then, uh, everyone, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm gonna stop the, the screen share here now. Um, and what I really like here, and I actually want to thank ServiceNow and especially Mark and everyone there who is pushing this forward because it's making a tremendous impact. And, you know, we're on the sidelines of it, even though we're geeking out, but, um, it's absolutely fantastic to see these updates. Super fun to do this with you, Michelle. Um, it's the first masterclass or you know session we do together, and I'm happy this is the one. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, likewise. No, I, I absolutely have fun, uh, and I, I can't believe that one hour is already over. Oh, Time yeah. flies. Exactly. Um, no, exactly. thank, thanks everyone for watching, and also thanks to everyone in the community. I really had fun yesterday reading up on all your your perspectives and op opinions. So yeah, you can see it's an exciting topic for a lot of people. And uh, yeah. yeah, and and obviously a bit of shameless marketing here. If if anyone you know is on this journey, you want to know more, you want to know how to structure these things, etc. Always feel free to reach out to us. We're super pragmatic. Uh, visit our website. Um, you will find plenty of ways to contact us. But I do want to reiterate. Um, 
do please follow our YouTube channel um, and uh, do follow our LinkedIn. We will send out this recording. We will publish it on YouTube. Um, but uh, with all of that being said, have fun out there with CSDM5 and we will for sure do more material around this. So um, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.